Hey guys, what's up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and the other day I got an email from a company called PCB Way and they said, hey, we like your stuff, let's do a project together. And I said, anything? And they said, yep, you tell us what you need, we'll get it to you. So I thought, what would be a good project? What do I need? Well, all this stuff is controlled by a program called Endless Studio. And I really needed a custom controller just for that piece of software. So if you haven't checked out PCB Way, they are the one-stop shop to make all your project dreams come true. They can do normal circuit boards in multiple colors. They can do aluminum circuit boards. They can do assembly. They can do CNC, 3D printing, metal forming, injection molding, whatever you need, they can do it. So I said, okay, let me design this custom controller that I need and I'll send you the files and see what you can do. I also thought it would be a great chance to test out a lot of their services. So I tried normal boards, I tried aluminum boards, I tried the assembly, I tried the 3D printing. And I got a box with all the parts and when I put it together, this is what I got. This thing is probably one of the coolest things I have ever made and I want to thank PCB Way for making this happen for me. So let's take a look at what this is, why did I need it, what does it run, and how I made this and designed it and put it all together. Let's do it! So this is the Endless Studio main interface. I want my controller to match the look and feel of this interface as closely as possible. To start with, I want buttons that correspond to these target buttons. These determine which tracks are active when you're looping. Next, I'm going to want these enable controls on a separate row of buttons. They unmute and mute the audio channels. Now I'll need 8 potentiometers to control the 8 faders on the mixer. Next I'm going to need 6 buttons for the instrument select buttons. The cool thing about Endless is it actually comes with built in drums, bass and keys so you can start jamming right away. Probably most importantly I'm going to need 4 buttons for the 4 loop controls. You can loop 1 bar, 2 bars, 4 bars or 8 bars. Lastly, I'm going to add a shift key so I can make the buttons do double duty and maybe I can control the create new riff, start and stop and other parameters. So now that I know what my controller needs, I can start the design. So when I start a design, I like to start in Fusion 360 and do a 3D mockup. That way I can check fits and clearances and make sure everything's going to work together. The idea I had for this project was to make two circuit boards. One's going to be the main board that's going to hold all the components. And then there'll be a second board that is just going to be a decorative faceplate. To hold the two boards together, I'm going to connect them with standoffs. This will allow me to put a screw on top and underneath and make kind of a PC board sandwich. Next I designed the faceplate and here is the sandwich all together. Finally, we need something to protect the bottom of the board, so I designed a 3D printable enclosure that the sandwich can drop into. You notice there are sunken screw holes on the bottom, so I can put screws right through the case into the bottom of the standoffs. Now that that's done, I can import the shape of my main board into KiCad and design the actual circuit board. And there it is, isn't that beautiful? Finally, I used Inkscape to draw the graphics for the front panel. I have a whole video that shows you how to do this in detail, so check that out if you wanna try it yourself. Now that everything's designed, we can take the files and give them to PCB Way to start manufacturing. The boxes are here. The boxes are here.
So the first thing I see when I open the box is this super cool t-shirt. It's got their logo on the front, and when you flip it around to the back, they got a big number eight because they are having their eight year anniversary right now. Congratulations. The next treats in the box are these two reference boards. The first board has all the SMT footprints, which will be a great reference when designing. The next board has all the schematic symbols and when you flip it over, it has this beautiful triangle design showing Ohm's Law. As you can see, these boards look beautiful with the gold plating and the matte black solder mask. And you can also see the detail in their silk screening. It is very crisp and clear. Next up is this delightful set of rulers that show the different solder masks that they provide. First we have this lovely matte black. Next we have a very nice light gray. That's a very interesting color. Next we have this beautiful orange board that I definitely want to use in the future because if you've noticed from my website and my logo, orange is kind of my thing. Now this next one took me by surprise because this is a golden silk screen that I've never seen before. It's very interesting. And finally we got this beautiful pink colored board. This is a really striking color and I'm tempted to make a project just so I can order some pink boards. Okay, so now that we've unwrapped our presents, let's get to the actual project. And here is the completed board. It looks beautiful. The matte black solder mask looks great and the silk screening is so crisp and clear. I like to check the silk screen by looking at my logo and checking for any unfilled areas in the white background and there are none. I also took a magnified look at the surface mount component they assembled at the factory and it looks perfect. We are off to a good start, so now let's open up the front panels. For the front panel, I decided to try something a little different. PCBWay offers an aluminum circuit board, and I thought that would be great for a front panel. It's very strong and there's very little flex in it. I also chose the normal black solder mask for the front panel because it has a little shine to it, unlike the matte black version and it makes the project look a little classy. In case you're curious, here is the difference between the normal black and the matte black. While we're here, take a look at the quality of that silk screen. Very nice. If you didn't know already, PCBWay can handle all your manufacturing needs with CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. PCBWay can print in ABS and PLA, but they also have a lot of other options to choose from. I asked for their advice on a material that would have high strength, but also a nice finish. And they recommended HPPA12 nylon, which is printed with multi-jet fusion printing. And here is the finished part, a black nylon case with a slight textured finish. It's very nice looking, feels great, and is super strong. Now that all our parts are here, we can finally get to building. First, I'll need my 3D printed case, the main circuit board, and the front panel. For the processor, I'm gonna grab a Teensy LC, a whole bunch of Gatoron brown buttons, a heaping bag of multicolored keycaps, and a plethora of potentiometers. I'll also need a big beefy USB jack and some nice knobs to top it all off. Let's get to it. The first step is to prepare the microcontroller by soldering two wires to the USB breakout pads. Good times. Next, we'll grab some breakaway headers and break them away because that's what they're designed to do. And then we'll put them in the holes of the microcontroller and solder it gently to the circuit board. A nice circuit board holder makes this job extra comfy. 
Now I'll solder the USB jack where it should be because it won't work without it. Now we'll insert and solder the potentiometers, making sure they're very straight because crooked knobs are not fun. Go on Dave, you can do it. Next we'll grab our beautiful buttons, put them in place and solder them. Man, there's a lot of them. Now we'll take the entire circuit board and put it in the case. Make sure it fits, oh yes, like a glove. Next we'll grab some assorted screws and standoffs and attach the board to the back of the case. Nope, that board ain't gonna fall out anytime soon. Now I'll break out my fancy screws and attach the front panel. And now we'll take our colorful keycaps and put them in place. Every button needs a different color keycap. It's very good fusing. And now we just gotta put on the knobs. Now let's take a close look at our handiwork. Well, hello there, good looking. So once again, sincere thanks to PCBWay for helping me make this awesome project. I think the only thing we can do to top this video off is to take this sucker for a test spin and make some music. And while we do that, let's enjoy the names of my Patreon supporters on the big screen. Thank you guys, and I will see you all very soon.